Hello friends, this video on diversity in living organisms part 17 is brought to you by examflu.com. No more fear from exam. So let us start with porifera. So what does the word porifera means? Porifera has come from the word pores. And pores means holes. Right? So the, 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 it has to be some kind of organisms with pores or holes. So these are organisms with holes all over their body. So if you look at this picture, this is an example of a porifera. It doesn't even look like an animal, right? But it is an animal. So porifera were the most oldest form of animal. So they didn't have you know, specific features like eyes, nose, ears and all. But even then they were categorized as animals because they satisfied the basic characteristics of the kingdom animalia. That is they are mobile, they are multicellular, they are eukaryotes, they are heterotrophic. They do not have a cell wall. So here you can see, if you look at this picture very minutely, you can see that there are pores, there are small holes all over the body, right? So these organisms have this speciality because of which they fall under the category of porifera, that is animals with pores. Body differentiation into tissues is minimum. So that you can see it clearly from the picture. So this body is made up of, anyways, the basic component of the body has to be cell but the cell has not even combined together to form tissues so tissues are not seen much so we do not see specific organs like stomach kidneys etc so no organs are found so what how do they perform this different functions because in order to survive everything is needed right they have to take food so ingestion has to happen the food should be digested and then the energy should be utilized by them the unnecessary things should be excreted out so all these functions has to be performed so who performs all these functions now these organisms have different types of cell which perform various functions like digestion and ingestion of food secretion of skeletal fibers nutrient transportation etc so these kind of perform these kind of uh, functions are performed now another thing which is to be noted in case of porifera is that they do not have muscle cells now what happens if you do not have muscle cells? When you don't have muscle cells, you are not capable of movement and that is why porifera are immobile. So we say that they are at cellular level of organization because there are no tissues or no organs found. So the differentiation into tissues is minimum. So they are at a cellular level of organization. So you understand what are the different levels of organization? In the previous slide I told you, right? The different levels are cell, tissue, organ, organ system. So they are the different levels of organization. They have a hard protective covering outside. So if you see from outside the covering which they have that is quite hard and protective and this helps the cells which are present inside and they protect it. So this out, this heart protective covering is known as skeleton. So skeleton is another characteristic of the animals. All of them will have this skeleton structure so that the inner organs or the inner cells are protected. They prefer marine habitats. Mostly they are see, seen in near the oceans or the seas. Now, what, are the, what is the function of these holes which are present here? The holes form a canal system for circulating food and water throughout the body because they do not have a specific mouth they, or they do not have hands to take food and put it inside their mouth. They are not like that. So, these pores, why do they have these pores? They, these pores actually form a canal system. And what does that canal system do? It is for circulating food and water throughout the body. It is used for circulating food and water. So these are the holes through which the food and water keep reaching to different parts of the body. They are also termed as sponges. So because of their appearance, because of the presence of holes all over their bodies, they are often called sponges. You understand the word sponge? We often use it in our day-to-day -day life, right? It is a soft material which can easily absorb a lot of water because it has got a lot of spores on it. It is a soft kind of a thing, right? So 
they are these are known as sponges because they are porous even they have a lot they have too many holes and they can also absorb a lot of water so we often use the word sponge uh, with respect to towels or sponge cakes right why do we use that word sponge there because they are also things which have lot of pores on them and that is why they absorb a lot of water right so that is why this the kingdom porifera this class porifera is also termed as sponges right so you are clear with uh, the characteristics of a porifera they'll have holes throughout their body holes will help in circulating food and water they have a cellular level of organization no tissues no organs so how do they perform the different activities they they have different types of cells which keep performing the different activities like ingestion digestion secretion of skeletal fibers nutrient transportation etc and another point to be noted here is they do not have muscle cells so no muscle cells therefore they are immobile right okay so let us look at some of the examples of porifera porifera Euplectilia, Sycon, Spongila, these are some of the examples of Polyphera. So if you look here, I mean these are some of the figures which you will often find in the textbooks. And here I have tried to show how they actually look in real life. These pictures are the real life pictures. So if you see this Spongila, they have got small pores, like right? right? Even for this Sycon, you see the structure looks similar. They are little cylindrical in shape cylindrical tube-like structures and they also have got pores all over their bodies, right? Similarly, this euplectila. So if you see here, they have some hair-like structures here and throughout, oh, throughout their body, they have again got pores. So organisms with pores are all porifera. So let us go to the next class that is cylindrata. So let us look at the cylindrata. So what does the word cylindrata means? The word seal means hollow. So the first half that is seal, this term means hollow. And the word entrata means gut. So these are the organisms with a hollow gut. You understand what is gut? Gut is nothing but our, it refers to the digestive tract. The portion of the alimentary canal is known as gut. So these are those kind of organisms which have a hollow gut. So let us see what are they. Here better body differentiation than porifera. So in porifera there was no body differentiation at all. But here we have little bit of body differentiation. How? The body is made up of two layers of cells and a gastrovascular cavity. So now here what are these two layer of cells of which the body is made up of? Now, out of these two layer of cells, one layer forms the outside of the body and the other layer forms the inner lining of the body. So, one layer forms the outer lining of the body and the second layer forms the inner lining of the body. And there is a gastrovascular cavity. So this is the cavity which I am talking about. Gastrovascular cavity is nothing but the hollow gut which I am talking about. In these kind of organisms, tentacles are present. Now what are tentacles? Tentacles are flexible, mobile, elongated organs. So in this picture you can see these are the tentacles. So they are flexible. They can move as they like. So they are flexible, mobile and elongated organs. So as, as you can see, they are elongated organs. They have been elongated from the original body with stinging structures to catch prey. So they have got some stinging structure here. Some hook-like structure is present there which helps them in catching prey. So tentacles are used for food intake. So they help in catching prey and intake of Food. So the tentacles basically act as uh, an organ for ingestion. For example, in human beings, we have mouth for ingestion. For intake of food, we have mouth. Similarly, for cylindrates, the, for intake of food, they have tentacles. So tentacles help in food intake. So what are tentacles? 
They are flexible, mobile, elongated organs with stinging structures to catch prey. So food intake, so it will include catch prey. So these are the tentacles. They have tissue level of organization because in this case we see that these cells cells actually group together to form tissue like structure so here as as you as i mentioned two layers of cells are formed so that means the cells get differentiated so one layer of cell forms the outer lining one layer of cell form the inner lining the cells are getting grouped together so we can see tissues and therefore we say that it is at tissue level of organization they prefer aquatic habitats again they also prefer such habitats where there is a uh, presence of water may live in colonies or isolation. There are certain cellin threats which live in isolation. That means they will live singly. But there are certain cellin threats which live in colonies. That means too many of them will group together and then they will leave. Right? So examples of cellin threats, there are many examples. So let me give an example of cellin threat which exist in isolation. That means they exist singly. One such example is Hydra. So here the picture which you are seeing that is the picture of Hydra. So in Hydra these are the tentacles. So these are the tentacles and this is the outer layer. This is the outer lining. This is the inner lining. And what is this? This is the hollow gut or the hollow gastrovascular cavity. So what do we observe in the, by looking at the structure of this hydra, what do we see? These animals have a single body opening which leads to a hollow gut. So single body opening is here which leads to a hollow gut. Now this hollow gut is surrounded by the tentacles. So everywhere it is surrounded by the tentacles. Alright. Okay, so now one such organism which live in isolation is Hydra and when, it, when we talk about living in groups or colonies, we can take the example of corals. Corals are also organisms which are generally found in marine regions, that means in the seas or oceans. So they also, they live in colonies. Now these organisms are mobile. So unlike porifera which were immobile because they did not have muscle cells, these organisms are mobile and how do they move? They generally move by swimming because they, are, they live in aquatic habitats so they generally swim to move from one place to another. So let us look at some of the examples of cylindrates, hydra, jellyfish, corals, sea anemone. These are some of the examples of cylindrates. So here you can see that for corals they are living in colonies. You see so many corals are grouped together. So they live in colonies. If you look at the sea anemone you can see some leaf like structures here. So what are these structures? These structures are nothing but the hydra. I'm sorry these are the tentacles. So these structures will actually have some uh, stinging uh, thing attached to them because of which they will be able to catch prey and thus help in intake of food. Right? So these are some of the examples of cylindrates. So what do we, what did we observe when we compare the porifera and the cylindrata? So in porifera there was no body differentiation at all. Only cells were present which performed all kind of functions. In cylindrates little bit better body differentiation where at least the cells have organized themselves into tissues. They also have sub organs called tentacles for intake of food. They have a hollow gastrovascular cavity which helps in digestion of food. Right? And they are mobile when as when compared to prolifera which were immobile, these cylindrata are mobile. So we see that as we proceeded from um, porifera to cylindrata, there are some advancements or there are some improvements in the body structure. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.